to open an account, please. Oh, are you saving for something? Yep, my money's gonna save the world. We're gonna turn wind into energy! And even make it possible for the sun to power stuff. We're making farms more efficient. And turning gas into electric. No exhaust pipes, see? <laughs> We're doing all that. We sure are. Hi guys, Kwe, Sunshine Tenasco and Indigenous Cause, Kitagon Zivi and Buntba. Uh, my name is Sunshine Tenasco. I'm from Kitagon Zivi and Anishinaabeg in Quebec, which is an hour and a half of a drive uh, away from Ottawa, Ontario. I am uh, in Anishinaabe, uh, unceded uh, territory right now. Uh, thank you for joining me. Um, I am the author of Nibi's Water Song, which is a book that I wrote, a children's book I wrote about the lack of clean drinking water in First Nations communities. So I'm gonna go ahead and read this book to you. And then after I'm gonna talk about the reasons why I wrote this book, and then we'll go ahead and read it again. And then we'll do a, a little writing activity. Um, so here we go. Uh, this book is called Nibi's Water Song. And Nibi is the name of my 15-year-old daughter, and Nibi means water in my language, in Anishinaabemwin. And so I wrote it, and it's illustrated by Chief Ladybird. For my children, Kegana, Nibi, Kinu, and Chala, may you all create your own life with happiness. For my mom, Luce, who always ordered me Scholastic's books and for teaching so many children to love reading. 
and for Pauline de Conti, the teacher who taught more than she ever knew and for making me write my first book. Nibi was a thirsty, thirsty girl. So thirsty, her mouth was clucking. I am thirsty, thirsty Nibi, and I need water. Nibi ran to her sink and tried to get water. Oh no, there was still no clean water. Hmm, what should Nibi do? She ran to her neighbor's house. Nope, just brown water there too. Blech. No problem. Thirsty, thirsty Nibi skipped down the road to the river. Kigos the fish jumped up and told Nibi, you can't drink this dirty water. Blech. This water was too sicky too. No problem. Nibi skipped to the next town, the town with the big shiny houses. She knocked on the biggest, shiniest door she could find and said, I am thirsty, thirsty Nibi, and I need water. Do you have water? May I please have some? The nice lady who lived in the big house with the green roof gave her a teeny tiny plastic bottle of water and shooed her away. Nibi was so thirsty, she drank the bottle of water in one big gulp. Burp. Her water was all gone again. No problem. Thirsty, thirsty Nibi went back to the house with the green roof and knocked and knocked and knocked and knocked some more. Nobody opened the door this time. No problem. Thirsty, thirsty Nibi kept knocking on every single door in the town with all the big shiny houses. Knock, 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 but no one came out. Nibi made a sign. She danced and sang down every street with her giant sign. I am thirsty, thirsty Nibi, and I need water. Nibi looked under rocks. Nibi looked in swamps. Nibi looked in houses. Nibi asked all of her friends. They had no water to share with her either. Where is the clean water? But then all of Nibi's friends started singing and dancing with her. She is thirsty, thirsty Nibi, and she needs water. They were so loud that the people in the big shiny houses came out. They listened, and soon they were all singing to Nibi's tune. She is thirsty, thirsty Nibi, and she needs water. The more they sang together, the louder they got. The whole town with the big shiny houses started to sing. She is thirsty, thirsty Nibi, and we want to help her have water. With a lot of hard work, digging and singing, everyone worked together. And finally, thirsty, thirsty Nibi got her clean water and she shared with all of her friends. And she was happy, happy Nibi. So this book um, is a, a little bit about my community and the project that I started. So I started a project called Her Braids to talk about the lack of clean drinking water in so many First Nations communities. The reason that I called it Her Braids is because when we go into powwow or circle or ceremony, we braid our hair. And so when we braid our hair, we take three equal strands of hair. Th these are Anishinaabe teachings. Everybody has different teachings. Um, and one, one strand or this strand of hair represents the mind and the other one is the body and the other one is the spirit. And so when you braid your hair, you tell yourself repeatedly while you're braiding your hair, mind, body, spirit, mind, body, spirit, mind, body, spirit, over and over again until your braid is done. 
And all of us as human beings, we all have these aspects of ourselves, right? Whether you're a baby, you're an adult or uh, an elder, we all have to nurture our mind, body, and spirit. And so when we braid our hair, it's a reminder that we have to be uh, to be a healthy person. All of these parts of ourselves have to work together. And we're stronger when we care for each of those parts of ourselves. And we have this drum. I don't know if you, you've ever seen a big drum or a hand drum or the little boy drum. And the little boy drum is the water drum. And so we need water for, you know, when we're thirsty, we need it for our mind, our body and spirit. And so that's why um, I started this project called Her Braids. And so how it started out is I made these beaded pendants, which you can see um, that Nibi is wearing all throughout the book here. And it was to tell everybody who wore them to say, I support everybody having clean drinking water. And so it may sound like um, clean drinking water is not a big deal, but I want you guys to think about how often you drink water. So when you go to school, let's say when you're in school, how many glasses of water do you drink in the morning? So let's count, let's, let's work together here and think about this. You wake up in the morning and you have water. You may have water, a water bottle at school. Um, after you have gym, you definitely run to the fountain and you go and drink water. Um, when you, after school, you know, after the playground or wherever you go, you're going to have another glass of water. And then also before bed. Now, when your parents or your aunties or, you know, someone's cooking for you, whether they're cooking rice or potatoes or boiling corn, you always use water as well, right? Can you imagine all the foods that you make that you have to make to be able to make healthy, delicious food all uses water. And so when we think about it, how about there, there's different communities, um, my community, uh, especially and so many others um, that don't have access to clean drinking water. So my community is an hour and a half from Ottawa. That's not a far drive. So um, who knows what parliament is? Do you guys know what uh, parliament is? That's that that big building in Ottawa with the green roof uh, where all the decisions and all the rules are made for Canada. And so this here, we're going to go through this book again, um, but we are an hour and a half uh, close to the parliament buildings, which is an hour and a half away, and we still don't have clean drinking water. So when we think who doesn't, who can't drink from the tap, you sort of think up north or, you know, down south, but it's happening everywhere in First Nations communities. So we're going to go through this, we're going to go through the book again, and we're just going to have talk about each page a little bit more. So Nibi is thirsty, she wants water, but she can't drink it from a tap. Now, in cities, that's a normal thing that you can just run to the tap. But in so many First Nations communities, you can't drink the water because it makes, you know, it, it makes you sick, actually sick or gives you rashes and things like that. And so she goes and there's different reasons why water is, um, you know, not healthy to drink. And in here, I wrote the water is sicky. Right. And, and that's just it. The water isn't healthy. And so when you drink it, it makes you not healthy either. And there's lots of communities where you can't even bathe in the water or you can't even wash your clothes in the water. Um, and otherwise it turns it brown. So it's not it's not very good. So there's the there's the brown water. Um, you know, a long time ago, we were able to drink from the rivers and everything was clean and spring waters. And now because of pollution and stuff like that, um, you know, a lot of rivers, you can't drink from the water. So Nabi tries that route and that doesn't work either. So she says no problem and goes to the town with the big shiny houses. And she's asking for water. And so in this book, the big shiny houses sort of mean the houses in town, you know, the fancy houses, and they go there, and they're able to have water. And so the nice lady who lived in the big house with the green roof, so the big house with the green roof is talking about Parliament, that's where all the decisions in Canada are made. And so, you know, she goes, Nibi goes to the, the big green roof, which means Parliament, and gives her a teeny tiny plastic bottle of water and shoes her away. So in my community, before there was a milkman, you know, back in the day, we have a waterman who delivers those big jugs of water. 
um, to our houses. But if you drink all of your water, and it depends on how many people live in your house, then you're all out of water and you have to buy it. And then you can't drink it and you have to go, you know, to the store or whatever. Um, so this was, this is talking about that. And her, all of her water was gone in one big gulp. And then she was gone again. And there was no more of this bottle. And so no problem. She said she went back to the house and knocked, but nobody opened the door. It's too bad. You only get your two bottles, your two big bottles for the week, and we're going to close the door. So that's not really good. That's sort of a fake solution. It's a, it's a bandaid. It's not really helping and giving everyone access to clean drinking water. But Nibi, as so many other Indigenous uh, kids and children, she kept going and she kept doing it in a good and positive way and kept singing and knocking and singing her tune. I am thirsty, thirsty Nibi, and I need water. And so she made signs and danced down every street with her giant sign. Um, so that's also a, a way you can, you know, help the situation. But also if you have social media, which you probably don't because you're a bit young for that, but is to talk about it. And instead of signs, put messages and let everybody know that clean drinking water is not a human right in Canada. Okay. So Nibi looked under rocks. She looked everywhere and she asked all of her friends, but all of her friends are likely in her First Nations community. And, um, they didn't have clean drinking water either. They were in the same situation as her. But then slowly, all of Nabi's friends started singing and helping, right? And using their voice and dancing. And you see these beautiful powwow dancers here? They're all helping her spread her message and talk about wanting to help Nabi have clean drinking water. And the more that people talked about it and the more people sing and work together, then that that parliament, the house with the big shiny green roof had to listen because everyone was talking about it, right? And then soon they were singing, she is thirsty, thirsty to be, and she needs water. And the more they sang together, the louder they got. And the whole town with the big shiny houses started to sing, she is thirsty, thirsty to be, and we want to help her have water. And so that's what that's what we're trying to do. Everybody's trying to do, and we need everybody to sing this tune. And with a lot of hard work, digging and singing, everyone worked together. And finally, Thirsty Thirsty Nabi got her clean water and she shared with all of her friends and she was happy, happy Nabi. And so that's the, that's the key. Once everyone has it, then will be just the same as everyone else who lives in the city. And so we're trying to help make clean drinking water a human right. And so this last page here is, is uh, sort of to talk about it. So your parents can read that to you or your teachers can read this to you. It says, let's talk about clean water. We live in Canada, a place where people are known to be kind to each other, where people are seen as fair and welcoming. But this same place still doesn't treat people equally for some things, things like having clean water. If you've been running around like Nibi and get thirsty, you can go to your sink and get a glass of water. There are many Indigenous communities in Canada that don't have clean water. That means, uh, that means um, maybe families who live near you have brown bath water that causes rashes and drinking water that would make them sick. They have, a, they have to boil their water before they can use it. And sometimes their water is so bad, they have to use bottled water for everything. This needs to change. You can be a part of the solution. If you think everyone should have clean tap water, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your teachers, and tell everyone just like Nibi. And so that's the idea, is to talk about it and bring awareness about it. Because Everybody knows, and especially kids, because you, are, you guys are so uh, determined and honest and know the difference between right and wrong. So you know that everyone should have clean drinking water. And it really bothers kids and as it should. And so our hope here is that you tell everybody that you know. And um, not just that, it doesn't stop there. So you can also sign this little pledge, basically put your vote in uh, onto the, this project called the Blue Dot Project to say, we think everyone should have uh, clean drinking water. Or 
what a lot of the students in my in my workshops when I give them in person do is we have them take a piece of paper and a pencil and we have everybody write to the Prime Minister of Canada and you can find his address online you can ask one of your parents and it could be something simple like dear uh Prime Minister Trudeau uh, I am my name is Lindsay. I am uh, eight years old and this is where I live. And I think that First Nations communities in Canada should have clean drinking water. And that's it. It could be something that simple. And you take that and you put it in an envelope and you put a stamp on it and you mail it off. And he is going to read that letter. Now imagine if every single person listening here today took the time to do that exercise and really take action. Imagine how powerful that would be if he got 100 or 200 or 300 letters um, from kids all across Canada to, to bring awareness about this. And so I often get letters from students who, you know, participate in activities and the teachers uh, work are, you know, read this book and they write to me and they write to Nabi and they tell me what they've learned and they tell me this reminds me of my community or this reminds me of this or why why don't you have clean drinking water and that's the question why don't we have clean drinking water um when everybody else does right and so that is a very big question um I also like to take this time. I know you guys are very young, but you might have heard about the 215 Indigenous children who were ages 3 to 18 who died in residential schools um, and their bones were just found. And residential schools was when they would come into the community and take kids and bring them away from their parents for years and years and years and sometimes starve them and sometimes do all kinds of not nice things and really scary things. And 250 in one school, um, their bones were just discovered. So that means they, they died in that school and they never went home. Now, I know that it's probably hard to hear about these things, um, but it's the truth and that's what happened. Um, and it happened to only Indigenous kids. Um, so, you know, if you lived in Canada and you were uh, white or any other nationality, this didn't happen to you. But if you were Indigenous, Anishinaabe, First Nation, however you want to uh, call, call us, um, someone could come into your house and take your children away from you. And so this is a very big issue about things that happen that are continue to happen uh, to Indigenous people in Canada. So we have to talk about this. Uh, I know it's a really difficult thing, but if we say this is not acceptable we can't do this anymore we have to change the rules you guys you kids are the ones who are going to make this change you guys are the ones who are going to speak up and you are going to be the ones who are part of this who help get nibi and all of her community and all of her friends clean drinking water because we can't do it alone we need strong allies and so what's an ally? An ally is a friend, basically, who wants the same thing for you that they have. And we need all of the allies, you know, who believe in good and who believe in equality, meaning that we all have the same things and we can all be happy and healthy and all of that stuff. So yeah, um, I'm gonna go to um, a couple of questions here now. Let's see. Where are the shiny people getting the clean water from? So the people who live in the shiny houses um, in towns, they have clean drinking water. There's infrastructure, meaning there's water pipes in place. So I'd also like to say that, so my community is literally touching a French town of Manawaki. So I'm from Kitagon Zibi, and literally we're beside the French town of Manawaki. So the French town of Manawaki, every single house in the French town of Manawaki has clean drinking water. And this is where non-Indigenous people live. And then literally you could take your a foot, like one foot over. 
On this side, which is Kitagon Zibi, which is my community, 40% of our community still doesn't have access to clean drinking water. That means almost half of our community, the people that live there, don't have access to that water. Now, we're asking the government that question. Why can they access clean drinking? Why does everyone in the town of Manawaki have clean drinking water? And 40%, when we are very close, not have it. So imagine your teacher one day is, you know, in a classroom and you can't drink the water. So you just have to drink from bottles, bottled water and said, well, uh, Lindsay, you're brown, so you don't get clean water. Uh, but Jennifer over here, we're going to give her the clean water. Huh? And Jennifer's friend, uh, Aisha, she's going to get clean water as well. And this person's going to get it. But Lindsay's friend, uh, Ashton, well, he's brown too. And he lives on this side. So he doesn't get clean drinking water either. So how are we making these decisions? It's not right, right? There's right and there's wrong. That's not right. We can't tell people because you are First Nations, you don't get clean drinking water. And so we all have to write to people who can create that change. And that's Prime Minister Trudeau. So everybody needs to write to him and say, hey, it doesn't matter if Lindsay and Ashton are brown, everybody in Canada should have access to clean drinking water. And that's the whole purpose of it. Okay, that was a great question. Thank you from Elkhorn Public School. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yes, this is a true story. Uh, I didn't see that part of it. Um, what can we do to help fight for clean water in Indigenous communities? You can do just that. You can write letters and put it in an envelope and mail it off. And I know you guys are young. And if I was there, I would, I, you know, we do that as part of our project is we get everybody to write a letter and we put it in an envelope. We put a stamp on it and we put the address and we put it at the post office and, and put it in our mailboxes and it gets delivered to uh, Prime Minister Trudeau. So that is one very huge step that you can do to help. And it will take you maybe an hour of your time, but the impact is amazing. You can also just talk about it and any chance you get to all of your friends uh, and discuss it. Um, Brown water is mud. Yeah, pretty much. It can be mud. Uh, my class is wondering why the water is not clean in your community. So a lot of water has to go through a filtration process. So you might learn this in science as well, right? There's sand and there's like mud and there's rocks. And so the earth naturally cleans it. But when the water is too polluted, you know, whether it's, you know, just regular pollution or boats or oil or whatever, um, the Mother Earth can't clean it properly. So it has to use a filtration system. So every water that you drink, if you're living, let's say in Ottawa, Ontario, it has a filtration system and it goes through the process and then it's clean to drink. Now, what happens is, is that if you live on a First Nations community, not all, but they don't have the infrastructure, meaning they don't have the, um, the filtration system put in place. Uh, to be able to clean it out. And so that's why um, that's why we don't have clean water in most of our communities. Um, I speak English and I speak a, a little bit of Anishinaabemowin, which is my language. Oh, it's kind of, hold on. So question, how fast do families use up their bottle of water? Why can't they have as much as they want? Excellent question. Keep asking that question. Uh, write to your write to those people with the green roof and ask that question uh, because that's what we're asking too, and that's why this project is started. Um, and families get up to like it depends how many people live in your house. So you know if you have only one person, you might get one jug, but that one jug is supposed to last you a week to drink, to cook, to all that stuff. Um, so it's not a lot, and often you know people run out of water. Um, is it expensive to provide this water to your community? It absolutely is because imagine in every household having to deliver those bottles, which are $10 each, uh, times it by two or three or four, uh, when if you go somewhere else, it's free. You just turn on your tap and it's done. And then we also have to pay for a truck, 
a, a delivery service, someone to actually bring it to every single house and then take the take the empty bottles with them and do that. So it's very expensive to do that. Um, what is your favorite book you have written? And is this book available? Yes. Well, actually, this is my only book to date that I wrote. No, that's not true. That was published. Uh, me and Chief Ladybird, are, who illustrated this book, I think there's a picture of her back here. She's beautiful. That's her. And that's her dog Ludo, who was in uh, who was in in the pictures here. So she put Ludo, and I put my daughter. Um, so I wrote this book, Nabi's Water Song, and I also wrote another book. And me and Chief Lady Bird are working on that right now as we speak. And so we can't say too much about it, but we're really excited, and it's a really good book as well. Um, and so it's available uh, on Amazon. You can just uh, go go on Amazon or actually any Indigo chapters. Uh, they, they usually have their all stock there and you can either order it online or go to chapters of Indigo. Uh, let's see. Why does the government not give the community water? That's it. That's uh, exactly the question. We need to change that. And we, we need to make sure that um, they see that everybody is uh, equal in Canada. And um, sometimes they're, they're just not seeing that yet. And we have to be the ones to make sure that they do. Did you have clean water as a child? So before, when I was a kid, they often didn't test the water as much as they do now it, you know people test the water more often so we drank it and only when I was a teenager did we realize that it wasn't acceptable to drink so um yeah we 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 grew up drinking not so good water and then uh, and then we got the water delivery service what in, who inspired you for the story? Well, obviously my little girl, her name is Nibi, um, and she's a little firecracker kid. Uh, you know, some kids are quiet, some kids are funny. She's just uh, a real go-getter. And um, yeah, I think that it was, it was important to have um, happy and powerful Indigenous kids on books because sometimes we don't see that. You know, when we go into bookstores, I didn't see a lot of kids uh, who look like me or characters that look like me, whether it was on TV or whether it was on, on books. And so I really think that it's important that we see other people and we see uh, Indigenous kids um, who are happy and who are making a change and who are doing something good. And so that was sort of the inspiration behind, uh, you know, how she looks. And you can see here, obviously, braids are a big thing uh, for us. And you can see little stars uh, stars in her hair and her hair, how Chief Lady Bird uh, did it was her hair sort of uh, showed how she was feeling, you know, throughout the book. So it's very interesting, uh, her take on that. Okay, let's see. Yes, yeah, so the book is uh, also published in French. So it's sorry, the question is, have you published your book in other languages? So it's available right now in English and in French. And it's also going to be available in the United States in October with a couple of different pages. So in this one, we said the building with the green roof, but in the next edition, which is available, which is going to be available in the States, there's actually two uh, extra pages, one that I wrote and Chief Lady Bird illustrated, and it's going to have the parliament buildings in the background and uh, a really, and a, a jingle dress dancer uh, who's in red leading, leading that uh leading that dance to parliament um are you in the story no but i but my name's on the uh, on the front and the back cover so that's uh good enough for me uh is this a problem throughout canada we are in calgary alberta absolutely it's everywhere and you know if you're with a teacher right now there are tons of maps uh where you can google where it's happening and there's still so many advisories and, uh, you know, I, I mentioned it really short, but some communities, you have to boil your water for five minutes. So if, if they don't have a water delivery system, meaning the blue jugs, um, you have to boil your water every single time for five to 10 minutes. 
sometimes that's enough to get the purification and it makes the water clean when you boil it. But imagine you're thirsty and you came from uh, gym class and you try and get water. Well, now you have to boil it and then wait to cool down and then drink it, right? And you have to, how do you do that? Go to the kitchen? Does your mom or your parents or your aunties or you know whoever you're living with, do they have to boil it for you and send you with a water bottle? It's a real pain to have to do that uh, just for water when it's when you can get it anywhere else. So absolutely, there's maps that show little dots of all the communities who are on boil water advisories or who can't drink their water because sometimes no matter how much you boil it, it's too, it's too sick, right? And you can't drink it, period, end of story. Okay, how do you get water if you can't get it from your tap? That's it. You have to, you don't have a choice or else, you know, it's going to make you sick. So you have to get it from town or from the grocery store and you have to get it in those water bottles um is it only indigenous people that have dirty water that's a great question um there are a few towns that have made the news and people talked about it but it made the news all across canada and everyone uh you know made a really big stink about it and they got their clean drinking water um pretty quickly and and figured out a solution and yet First Nations communities, you know, it's been uh, 16 years now for our community, uh, where, you know, we've, we've learned about this and, and acknowledged it, and it still isn't an issue. And so it's not met, you know, they don't talk about it in the news all the time. Whereas when it's a non Indigenous community, when it's a town, um, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of talk about it. It's in the newspapers, it's on the radio, it's, it's everywhere. And so we have to talk about it as well. And that Blue Dot project, which is uh, a David Suzuki project, David Suzuki is an envir environmentalist, and he really, uh, all his work is around that. And so the Blue Dot movement, uh, who is wh why this project started as well uh, with them, um, is to make clean drinking water a human right in Canada. Now, that means that everybody, no matter of the color of your skin, no, it doesn't matter, everybody will have access to clean drinking water. So if there is a town, let's say, um, that doesn't have clean drinking water, if everybody signs this blue dot pledge, then everyone will have access. But it will affect, it will bring more change to First Nations communities because we are the communities that are falling between the cracks. And so there, you know, there's way more um, community, First Nations communities who don't have clean drinking water than there is other towns. So yeah, but I mean, the whole project is to get everybody having clean drinking water and make it a human right. Um, and you know, we can't live without water. There's so many things that we can live without. You know, we don't need electronics. We don't need, you know, all of this and that, but you absolutely cannot live without water. Our bodies are made of mostly water. And so um, denying this is outrageous. Uh, let's see. Uh, would like to know if students at residential schools had cafeterias and showers. <laughs> yeah, that's... Um, <laughs> I don't know. I uh, I don't know all the details, uh, but there's a popular saying that's going around right now that uh, your schools have playgrounds, residential schools had graveyards, and that is sad but truthful. And there was a lot of um, you know they would they wouldn't feed them properly, and they tested certain things on little kids your age and um it was very scary and made them um you know i think maybe when you're older you'll learn more about it but it was a really really scary place and they weren't treated properly um how about let's see about how many people Yeah, there are still tons. Uh, I don't know um, offhand how many, uh, but before, hold on, maybe I can I can look that up. But there's still um, so many communities, um, thousands and thousands and thousands of people without clean drinking water in First Nations communities. Um, how can we help other than letters? And I guess that's a, that's a great question. Um, 
you know, I guess that's what we're all asking. And really it's about getting in touch with the change makers. Um, I do, I do my work through beaded pendants and before COVID I would go and give workshops and show people how to be and have this conversation. Cause not a lot of people know that we don't have clean drinking water. And it's important to tell that story and to tell the truth and educate people. And now this is sort of part of my work. So I wrote a story so that I can give workshops like this so that I can educate so that you can ask that question you know that's an important question to ask and I appreciate you wanting to help and so you know come up with creative ways you know maybe write a story maybe write a song maybe make artwork uh you know tell everybody you know um make fundraisers get everybody to sign the blue dot pledge write letters be as creative as you possibly can um, you know, young people, you guys are so creative. And so you probably have better ideas than me. But as long as you're thinking about that, that's, uh, that's awesome. Why is her name Nibi? I don't know, she was just uh, so my, you know, I named this named her Nibi, because that's my daughter's name. And she's 15 years old. And uh, well, at the time, she was younger when I wrote the book, and it means water. And uh, she was always, uh, when she was born, you know, we're born in water, right? You have the amniotic fluid around when you're pregnant that protects the babies in women's bellies. And so when she was born, she came out and there was so much amniotic fluid, which is like, you know, your water breaking. And she came out in a, in a big waterfall of water, the most that uh, the doctors had ever seen in my mom. And so I, I named her Nibi and, uh, Yep, and of course she just loves water still to this day. Uh, how long did it take you to make this book? So I thought about it for a while. And then finally one day after a workshop, uh, a parent said, you know, I really wish that I had something to teach my younger kids because the uh, beating workshops are for grade four and up. And so I said, I'm, I'm gonna just sit down and I'm gonna write this book. And so I wrote the first draft and it was, again, the same character, I knew what I wanted her to go on this journey and to find clean drinking water. And it didn't, uh, it just, it, it wouldn't end, I couldn't figure out a way. And so a couple of days later, I sat down and tried again. And I wrote it all in one sitting. So for over the course of a day, and then over that week, I would just look at it and make changes and add this and do this. So it probably took me about a week to send to write it. And then it took me another six months to finally send it to Scholastics. And then from the time I sent it by email, so Scholastics are the people who actually make it. So it was literally uh, just me handwriting things on blank paper. And then I put it in an email. Uh, and then when I finally emailed them, it took about two whole years to, to publish it from the time that I sent it to the time that it became this and you know signed the contract had chief ladybird so you know we sort of take it for granted that like these things just appear but someone had to sit down and actually create this whole image and that takes a lot of work so you guys must color and write a lot you know so how long would it take you to make this just this one picture that takes a long time that's a lot of hard work and so can you imagine every other picture in here right and drawing these and and doing all that that's a lot of hard work so she she really put a lot of time and effort into it and it took uh, two full years. What are some of the uh, things you like about living in your community? Ah, that's a good question. I love so many things. Uh, it's very, you know, you're in the bush and it, there's bush everywhere. So you can just, you know, your backyard, people are always doing something. You could go at any time and people are fishing or people are, you know, making syrup. Uh, you know, you spend a lot of time outside and there's family, there's a lot of visiting um, and just sitting there, you know, drinking tea. Um, so it's, it's beautiful. First Nations communities, my community, Kitigan DB is, is beautiful. Um, when did you write this book and has there been any change? There's been a little bit of change. So we have to acknowledge that as well, that, uh, you know, there's 
communities that don't have boil water advisories anymore or they have access to better uh clean drinking water um but you know it was supposed to be at this year everybody was supposed to have that and we're not there yet so my work continues until everybody has clean drinking water and then i don't have to do this work anymore and that's going to be an amazing day when that happens Oh, yeah. Do you have animals in your community who can? Okay. I'm, I'm here. Okay, we're back. Sorry, we had a little, uh, a little glitch here. Um, do you have animals in your community who can or can drink too? I mean, water is, you know, every animal drinks water. And so every animal that you can think of, you know, I think their systems uh, may be better equipped to handle it. Uh, than our systems, our delicate human bodies. Um, but yeah, I, you know, ideal world, um, we'd be able to have clean water and be able to drink from rivers and all that stuff again. But in order to do that, there has to be other things in place, you know, to, to bring the pollution down. How sick do you get when you drink the dirty water before? It's different. Each community has very different um, issues. I know that we have a lot of cancer in our community, uh, like a lot of cancer. Um, different people have, you know, different communities. They have they get rashes all over their body for taking a shower, for you know, bathing it consistently and washing your clothes with it. Um, and so that's a that's a great question. Um, but it's all different across the board because there's so many different issues. I wish I could answer that one better. Um, and then the last question, hi, how can we buy a beaded necklace? So we have, um, we have on herbraids.com, there's a shop we're often uh, sold out. Um, but yeah, we, we're going to be restocking soon and you can buy necklaces like this and different sorts. Uh, so go to herbraids.com. Um, and we're running out of time now. I want to thank you so much for sticking with me and hearing about this water issue and allowing me to read this book. I hope that it was helpful. Uh, I can't wait to see what you guys do. You can email me anytime you want at herbraids at gmail.com. And um, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you for sitting with me and giving me this time. Bye.